we're excited to play Liberty. Um, they have a really good football team, play extremely hard, good talent, a lot of transfers on their team. Um, Coach Freeze has done an outstanding job there. Um, you know, ranked in the top 25, only lost to Wake Forest, and they went for two. And unfortunately for Liberty, they didn't make it, or they'd be 8 0 right now. So, really, really good football team. Obviously, beat BYU the week after we did uh, bad. And uh, so, we know we have our work cut out for us. Uh, we are enjoying enjoy being on this run, even though it's been two games, but we are enjoying that and and we just have to continue to get better and uh, we'll have a fine week of practice i'm sure we will coach anything jump out to you on film that maybe you thought was one way and maybe it was a different way after rewatching yeah, a little bit I, I didn't think we played well um you know uh, at some at some positions i think we've got to get better there um uh, our special teams made way too many errors um Penalty-wise, uh, things that is us that we have to get fixed. Uh, offensively, I thought our line played okay. I don't think we played as well as we can. Uh, but uh, I'm glad we won and we can learn from all those things. But I, I didn't think we played, after watching the tape, near as well the entire team as I thought we did during the game. You mentioned you were asked about Dominic Johnson after the game. You mentioned yeah. you wanted to bring it up today. Yeah, thank you, and, and I appreciate y'all understanding that. I just didn't feel like it was quite the time. And when whoever asked the question, that wasn't, I don't think, out of anything. But why isn't he on the trip? And I appreciate that. Uh, last Tuesday or Monday, I can't remember. I, th I believe it might have been Tuesday. Uh, he made a cut and uh, on air and uh, and tore his ACL again. So it's really unfortunate for the team, certainly for him. Um, and uh, we found out uh, he actually practiced the next day uh, and then he did not practice on Thursday. And we found out uh, Thursday he went and got the MRI and, and uh, we found that out. It's, it's, a, it's certainly uh, disheartening for him because he had worked so hard to try to get back. The, the silver lining, if there is one, uh, there is one. Uh, you know, uh, is he would not have used any of his uh, – he, he can r use this as a redshirt year for him. And uh, we've kind of approached it that way. He would be uh, – by the time he got healthy, he would be ready for fall camp, which, is, you know, certainly we found that it, it didn't help him this year missing fall camp. And so we're, we're going with all the positives out of a, certainly a negative situation. Is it same knee? Same knee. Looking at their quarterback situation, Bennett has – Hugh called it up and down up until the BYU game. Then he had a great game. Now it seems like Brewer's coming back. So what do you make of where they stand at quarterback? They're both really good. Obviously, they've won games with, with both of them. I think they're very similar that they're both athletic. Um, both have good arms. Um, you know, I, I coach got a decision. He's the coach of He got a decision on what he wants to do because – uh, certainly, Bennett's been playing well. So, um, but we'll be prepared for both of them. It, it, I don't, I'm not going to tell you it's an easy preparation, but you know they're going to run their offense, and and both of them are really talented, obviously. So, uh, I don't, I'm not positive who they'll play. I, I believe Brewer played three plays uh, in their last game. When you look at their offense, what is it you got to be prepared for? <laughs> Well, they they can run the ball. They've got two really good backs. They can run the ball. Obviously, the quarterback running is a major concern of ours. I, I, let's say this, Tom. I, I said to our staff, I think it will be a really good week for us, good on good, because uh, even though they probably move more than we do on on our D-line, they blitz more than we do. But the, the structure of their defense, they run a mint – front of an odd front they run a four down over front uh, the structure of their defense will help us I think offensively on the good on good sometimes it's, it's irrelevant you're just getting the speed of the game this one I think will help us and uh, certainly on our defense I think what we do and what Ole Miss does has 
does has a lot of or oh mess i'm getting phrase mixed up in my i'm sorry uh and what liberty does um certainly has some similarities and i think but to answer your question the running quarterback their ability to throw the ball uh for our defense and then offensively we got to handle all this movement that they do and and uh and figure out what their game plan is fairly early and if we do uh We'll have a ch- we'll have a chance. I think Chavis may have been the only guy that wasn't able yeah. to play last week. Do you feel like he'll be able to play this week? <laughs> I hope. I mean, uh, I certainly was positive that he would be ready last week. He just wasn't. Um, again, that one was a basically a Friday. We found out on that one. Uh, but was able to take Andrew Chambly on the trip, and I thought that was great for him. And he's going to be a good player, by the way. Um, but he'll he'll be out of practice today, and so hopefully we'll have him this week. And with all those guys coming back, Slusher, the two Johnsons, uh, how did you feel like they did after watching them on film? Well, we we've got to get better. Um, um, you know, when you don't play for a period of time. A lot of times you've you've got to get the rust off. We we have to get better. Um, uh, I think if you ask each and every one of those kids, they would tell you that they have to play better. And and uh, I'm not telling them they played bad or anything of that nature, but uh, I think they're better players than what they played on Saturday, and I think they will play better. Coach, can you talk about Rocket Sanders and Reed Bauer getting honored by the SEC? What that means for the program to get kids recognized like yeah, that? Yeah, I think I think any time that you get national news on the good side uh, is always good for your program. And uh, um, so it, it means a lot to us. You know, uh, I think we went through a drought where nobody ever, you know, got anything. And and uh, so it means a lot to us, and it's it uh, helps in recruiting. But m- probably more importantly, it helps the kid with confidence and things of that nature. And, and I'm, I'm happy that they both were able to get that award, those awards. From a recruiting standpoint, were you a little, a little disappointed the LSU games at 11 a.m.? Yes. Um, you know, I was certainly hoping for a night game. Uh, I, I will say this, though. When we played South Carolina here at seven at 11 a.m., our, our stadium was packed and loud. And that's what it'll be on that game. I'm not worried about – the crowd, and you didn't ask about the crowd, but I'm, I'm saying I'm not worried about the crowd because we'll, we'll be there. But it is concerning that, man, if we had all day and had the kids at a night game, we could get further away kids to get here. And, and uh, yes, I'm a little disappointed in that, but it is what it is. Just this week, I mean, it's – been it'll have been over a month since you played a home yeah. game i mean i guess you, your thoughts on just returning home for the first time and <laughs> thank you lord it's time to get back home you know uh, everybody says it but we truly have the greatest fans in the country and and uh they want to see the hogs play and we want to play in front of them it's a big deal for me our staff and our team to play in front of the the state of Arkansas, big deal. And uh, so we're really excited and we have three in a row, you know, so obviously uh, we need to win and and each win will pump up our fan base a little bit more and, and it'll help us win. And they'll help us win if, if we're fortunate enough to win on Saturday, I'm sure it'll be a lot to do with the home field crowd advantage. From a recruiting standpoint, a three o'clock game, is that is that a good spot to have because you it is. have time to get away and then you can spend some time after with the recruits? It is. Three o'clock is probably, honestly, about the best because you can get kids, give them time to get in and give them time to get home if they can't spend the, spend the night. Uh, obviously, if they can spend the night, then, you know, they can you can be with them during the evening, things of that nature. So that's probably the best time. Uh, it seems like everybody likes to come to a night game, like the Texas game was um, two years ago. But yeah, three o'clock is probably about the, the perfect time for to get a lot of recruits in. How do you see the dynamic in the back, the defensive backfield with Chavis returning? Because you were moving Clark, yeah. depending on four man or three man front from Last, corner to mm-hmm. to safety. Do you is Chavis the starting corner when he comes back, or, and how do you deal with Clark then? 
Well, <clears throat> I think in all fairness to Clark, um, we need to leave him at one spot. Now, he, he, he played well um, Saturday. We need to leave him at one spot if we can. Um, with, I think uh, Chavis is going to, I think he'll battle with McAdoo, to be perfectly honest with you. It's time that we get him out there. He's a good player, and we've moved him over there for a reason, and and, and it has nothing to do with athletic ability because he's as talented as anybody over there. It has everything to do with understanding what to do, and we need to, I, be, I believe we need to increase his reps at practice and giving him an opportunity to get on the field. Now, obviously, with Chavis coming back, that helps. Uh, as long as we stay healthy, I think we'd probably look uh, a little bit more at corner with those two guys and and, and leave um, uh, uh, Hudson back, leave him back in the middle. So, Satan, you got a carry, and Joyner got some carries, and you got to use some reserves for the first time in a while. Uh, what did you see uh, since from that Arkansas group? Pine Bluff? <laughs> that was the last time. So did anybody flash? I mean, did you see some? You good know, I thought that? they played okay uh, this today at, at, in our meeting. Uh, quite honestly, I'm gonna get on them a little bit. We're not we're not putting the twos in there not to score, and we're not putting the twos in there to let somebody score. That's not we're 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 in there to compete and. Uh, I think everybody on the staff and and the kids were disappointed that we didn't score down there uh, when we had an opportunity with the second team and and I know the playbook is you know you want to be respectful for the other team I know the playbook is a little bit uh, confined a little bit but um, it's not defensively you know last year Pine Bluff our def our twos played the second half and and shut them out. But our offense also got shut out. And, and we just need to understand when we put them in there, we're trying to score. We're not trying to, hey, look at me, I'm in the game. We're trying to score and we're trying to stop them from scoring. That's until we get that mentality. I don't think the kids will play as well as they need to. For Hugh Freeze, this game carries a lot of magnitude. They're ranked now. Yeah. And it's a you know bigger audience, so to speak. What is it about Hugh Freeze's teams when you've seen them in the past? What maybe characteristics that you expect from them? Defense, uh, they're very – defensively, they will hit you, they can tackle you. That was the same thing over at Ole Miss when he was over there. Offensively, they're going to have something that you haven't seen. Um, they are well-oiled machine. They are physical. Uh, and they're a very disciplined team. Uh, he's always had really disciplined football teams. Uh, and then special teams, they've got a couple of guys that are good returners. Um, three is a really good punt returner. He also returns kickoffs as well. But uh, the wideout, uh, Douglas, and uh, he's really electric, I think. Um, but he's going to have them believing because they should. I mean, they're, they're ranked 23. We're not, you know, and, and – uh, uh, they they should be ranked 23. Again, they're one they're a two point conversion away from probably top 20. Yeah, kind of on those lines, I mean, like they they beat BYU. They had an open date. They're ranked. You got a new contract. A lot of good things. A lot of good vibes. I mean, <laughs> what do you think they're What are you expecting from them? Because they they got to be feeling pretty good. Their best game all year. There'd be no doubt in my mind that they'll they'll play their. They'll he'll have them ready. They had a, a bye week, uh, and they'll. They'll have their best game all year, and and uh, I expect a really close, tight game, and and uh, uh, hopefully we can make enough plays to win. And they're ranked, but you guys are fourteen point, I think fourteen and a half point favorites. What, what do you think about that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think I think they deserve their ranking. I don't know about the point spread. And then we, the news broke about Brian Harson. Uh, getting fired. Yeah, they, what, what are your What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, obviously, you, you you hate for anybody to get let go. I mean, it's part of our business. I think I think the average is about a little over three years of of us guys, you know, in this league. And uh, uh, but I mean, I I know he he did it the way he wanted to do it, and 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 worked extremely hard. And and uh, you know, I just hate for anybody to get let go, but. 
Uh, I don't know the situation, but uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. He's a really fine coach, and I'm sure he'll, if he likes to coach again, he'll find a nice job. Coach, your thoughts on uh, quarterback situation? I believe it's 11 Bennett um, is their guy. Yeah, he's a good player. Um, you know, Bennett is their guy unless Brewer is back, you know. Uh, obviously, Salter got hurt early in the year and has, I believe it's growing surgery. Um, I just, I think they're both really good players. Um, uh, I don't know, it, again, if Brewer's going to be back or not, but they're both, they both can throw the football. They're both in command of the offense. They both read well. Uh, you know, they, they, they have a lot of read runs like we do. Um, and they both run well, so. Uh, I don't know, again, if it's going to be a whole cell change in who's in there, you know, for us. I think they're very similar players. Coach, what do you remember about re the recruiting process for Rocket? Do you have any kind of stories that stand out, first impressions of him? Just what was that recruiting process like? I know he was a receiver and everything, too. Well, it was all Zoom, uh, to be honest with you. And and uh, I, I remember I – Every time we'd get off the phone with him, I'd go, is he really that way? You know, is he really, you know, is this him? You know, he's so polite and so nice and all this. And I don't know why I thought anything different. Um, but then once he committed, you know, he got a lot of offers and, and he stayed with us and never wavered a bit. I wanted to come in here and play slot for us is what we thought he would be, a big slot. And. And uh, we got hurt early and asked him if he wanted to move to running back. He said, certainly. And 1,000 plus yards after eight games later, he's he done a heck of a job. He's a wonderful person. I mean, a wonderful kid. We've got a lot of them, but he's he's a great kid. And we're just I'm just really honored to be his coach, and I'm so happy he's on the team. Speaking of Rocket, you know, he went over 1,000 yards. He hasn't been used, like, an entirely a lot mm -hmm. this year. I mean, do you – do you like the workload that he's had? Could he handle more, or is there a nice balance there with keeping him fresh? Well, I think I think we're we're doing about what we talk about on Saturday mornings, you know, um, about his rep count. Uh, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. What you're doing, but um, you have a plan, and it's pretty much worked out for us. Uh, we, I really like. Dominion and like AJ Green, I mean, I like him a lot. I think AJ AJ Green's improved as much as Rocket has. He just hadn't had the big one yet, uh, but I think he has. I certainly inside running, turning up north and south. I think Green has has improved his ability big time. And R Dub's R Dub. I mean, he's uh, he, even on the touchdown, uh, the first touchdown or second touch to the left. He uh, ran. It was so smooth. I mean, he doesn't really have any false reads. It was just a smooth two- or three-yard run, whatever it was. But uh, I like what we're doing with all those guys. And I think we're able to keep um, Rocket halfway healthy um, uh, through this through this stretch. That's the key to be able to, you know, your best players. You want to make sure they're available down this November stretch. Sam, back-to-back -back games, Matt Landers has put up some pretty nice numbers. Yeah. Um, it's just, is this what you've seen from him lately about what you expected when you got him out of the portal? And what's been the difference after that kind of that lull? I think his confidence has, has gotten better. He's, he, he, you know, he, he needs confidence. I mean, he, he needs that. Uh, we all do, but uh, he needs that. Um, he's catching the ball extremely well. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, uh, I think KJ, KJ is the one who's really – it looks to me like he's looking for him a little bit more. Now, he has to get open, and and certainly he's number one in read progression a lot a lot more than what he was earlier in the year. But he's playing really well. I've been pleased with him. Coach, bumper the past two games, seems like you guys have been not giving him as many snaps as you did. Is that just kind of because he's been dinged up a little bit? Yeah, we're, we're – uh, Hutch asked about Rocket. Um, a lot of that's with pool. Um, we got to get him through the season somehow. And uh, he's dinged up, as we all know. But, you know, he wants to play. Um, 
And I think what we're doing with him is going to allow us to get through the season with him, hopefully. And I think it's the first time I'm going to cover a game where each team has a guy named Rocket. They got a safety named Rocket Rahimi, number six. Um, I don't know if you've noticed him on film. What, what do you think about a, a Rocket? Two Rockets. Rocket? Yeah. I hope ours plays better than theirs. You know, I hope they both play well. Let's say that. But uh, no, I, I I haven't really thought about it. On on you know, I, I really haven't. But I imagine their Rocket's probably pretty fast too. Uh, Wait, Andrew, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you mentioned uh, Poole's snaps not being quite as much. Uh, Chris Paul, I guess, has yeah. got a lot more playing time. How have you seen him come along? Uh, he, you know, his is – you're the same one? His is uh, – Poole's getting better. Uh, as soon as he lets it go, in other words, as soon as he understands, I know what I'm doing and I just go do it, which we've all been there where, you, where you're, you're – Playing a half a step slow because you're going, I think I'm right. You know, I think we've all, anybody who's played sports has been that way early. Um, then I think he's going to be a really good player. I, I said, as I'm watching the tape um, on Pooh's sack, that there would be a lot of teams in the SEC take him off of that play because he was fluid, fast, violent on the hit. Uh, and he's got a lot of those left in his career for us. And, and I think as soon as he – as the more he plays, I think the better he'll get. I guess on Hudson no, – but Hudson Clark, you talked earlier about him playing one position. Do you feel like he's kind of a natural safety? I mean, he, he's got very good ball, ball awareness. I mean, he can read the play. and He does. He's, he's always smart. running the ball, yeah. Well, he's getting us lined up, you know, him and Blair and, and – uh, you know, unfortunately, the first week he played safety was against Mississippi State, and them guys were coming through there. We we weren't really slowing them down, and and uh, you know they were knocking the heck out of him in there. Um, I think if if in the future we decide to leave him a safety, we're going to have, we're going to have to bulk him up. You know, uh, but I I knew all this about Clark. You can count on him. Uh, you know what you're going to get, and and he's going to be out there every snap that he possibly can. And guys, there's an invaluable um, aspect to that. I mean, there just is. You know you, he know, you know he's going to be out there and you know what you're going to get. So i um, really, really pleased with him. I guess we saw Jackson Jackson Woodard in there for a few snaps. Look, he got held pretty good on a play. I guess, welcome <laughs> to the SEC, kid. But, but uh, what did you think of his limited snaps and how he did in that role? Well, I thought he played hard. Uh, Jackson's a great kid and uh, all in for the Hogs. And uh, uh, I think he made a tackle or two maybe. Be, maybe. Um, so it was good to see him have an opportunity. He played well. Thanks, Coach.